thanks for watching another video from WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm Jody Collier. And I'm Andrew Carden. Today we're doing a little stick welding. And we're going to be doing 7018-532-4F tube to plate. Let's hit it. Let's do it. In a previous video we did an overhead T-joint using 3 8 inch thick plate and 165 amps. So that was a three pass billet weld. Root pass and then a second pass on the bottom half of that root pass and then a third pass with the rod angle angled mostly in toward the, the upper piece to prevent undercut and that turned out pretty darn good with 532, 7018, 165 amps. For this video we're doing tube to plate and you can see the plate is much thicker. It's closer to one inch thick so we're bumping up to 175 amps arc force set on 10, 532, 7018, everything's pretty much the same, 10 more amps, rod angle's the same, arc length is the same, speed of travel's the same, it's just that you got to position yourself going around this thing, and this really becomes sort of a body positioning exercise, because you got to move yourself around, and you got to prop in, in doing so, and you can see Andrew has got a hand propped there, one hand propped and one hand holding the stinger, and that way he can move his body around the piece and move all the way around for a whole rod and keep the rod angle about the same. Rule of thumb again for welding overhead with stick, set the amps hot enough so that when you hold a tight arc the rod won't stick, then hold a tight arc. So the thing you don't want to do is set the machine really cold being afraid of it. You don't want to think, well I need to set this cold otherwise it's going to fall out on me set it almost as hot as you would in the flat position, maybe not quite, but almost, and then just hold a really tight arc and things will go a lot better than trying to weld it cold. Restarts are very important. You want to strike your arc in front of the crater so that you weld back over all your arc strikes. That applies with 7018 no matter what position you're in. Again, Andrew is holding a nice tight arc here, keeping it jammed in there aiming the rod sort of upward toward the upper member. Now I've got this sped up actually twice the actual speed here just so you can see gradual body positioning. He's got his one hand propped to steady up, the other hand holding the stinger and he's just moving around here, gradually moving around so that he can maintain line of sight and maintain the correct rod angle. That's important when you're welding something round because everything changes. It changes more the smaller diameter that a pipe is. So this bead is almost completed. One complete revolution. We're going to look now at the second pass and that's going to be stacked in just about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way over top of that first bead. Usually not quite half. Sometimes you do half but on, on a joint like this if you do halfway you'll tend to be a little bit a little bit uneven on your leg size. So about two-thirds to three-quarters overlapping the, the prior bead and that seems to work out just about right to have an even leg fillet weld. Let's look at another restart here. Again lighting up maybe an inch or so ahead of the crater kind of somewhat of a long arc and then moving not wasting any time but moving right into that crater filling the crater and then moving on. Now I'm, I'm cutting out a great deal of this because once you see some of the body positioning and you see some of the arc shots, it kind of all looks the same after that. So just makes for a little bit more watchable video. So now we're going to do the third and last bead. Notice that the rod angle is pointed a little bit more toward the very top plate. That is intentional. That's to avoid undercut. Also notice that the travel speed is a little bit slower on this last bead and that's very typical when you're doing the last bead on a three bead fillet weld. That's because there's a little bit of a notch, a little bit of a groove there, a valley to fill in and travel speed just tends to go slower. You want to really keep an eye on the edge of the bead on that top edge to prevent undercut. So go slow enough, keep your arc close enough to prevent undercut. Alright, let's take a look at a restart here. One, one last restart before we wrap this thing up. Right into that crater and then Travel speed again is, is, is fairly slow, 
slow enough anyway to fill that little valley and to prevent any undercut. Notice Andrew is working the rod just a little bit. And that is just to help the bead flatten out just a little bit to prevent it from being too crowned up and also to fill in that little valley that you're always going to have on the last bead on a three-pass fillet weld, whether it's overhead, horizontal, flat. After wire brushing, looks pretty nice. Let's put it down on the table and take a quick look at it.